We'd like to welcome our listeners and our viewers back for our podcast. And actually, today is going to be a special podcast. Um, we right now in Fountain Valley, we are hosting a conference. Uh, the conference is titled Mount Zion, the Kingdom of God. And much of the focus regarding this conference is regarding God's people's ultimate goal to become kings and priests. It's just like what we've been talking about this podcast for the uh, with the podcast uh, over this past number of months. Our goal is to really speak about how do we prepare for Jesus Christ's return. And as we said from the beginning, it's not as simple as just when he comes, we go up to heaven. But God's desire is that we, his people as Christians, would grow up and mature to be the sons of the kingdom, to become kings and priests, to reign with him for a thousand years in the coming kingdom age. And um, <clears throat> so at this conference, we actually have a lot of different Christians who have come from around the world, um, some as far as India. And uh, so with that, I'd like to introduce everyone to Nehemiah Raj. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, it, you know, in the conference, we've been, we see people from Canada, we have people from the U.S., some from Vietnam, we even have some from Europe. And mm -hmm. I know you're from Toronto, but you were originally from India. Yes. And um, it's so good to have you on. And what we uh, like to do is just a little bit is to talk about how in the world, as you, who was born and raised in uh, India, you were raised in Hindu, mm -hmm. I understand, right? Yes, that's right. And then you somehow met Christ, and not only met Christ, but you're on the same path that we are to get ready for the Lord's coming. That's right. And so maybe you can tell us a little about yourself, yeah, you know, your yeah, background sure. a little bit. Sure. Yeah, uh, my name is Nehemiah. Um, I actually changed my name a few years ago, like five years ago. Yeah. Before that, my old name was Rahul. I know. Uh, yeah. I always kind of, <laughs> right. I'm like, wait, wait, which name is it? Yeah. <laughs> and then after, yeah. it's been a while to yeah. focus. So, yeah, I was, I was uh, raised up in India. I was born in a Hindu family. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, one of the good things was that, you know, my, my parents, they actually belonged to these two different caste systems. Oh. And uh, they married. They just got married without the consent of their parents. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so growing up was not that easy because uh, there were so much of challenges from both the uh, family sides. So there was a lot of trials, there was a lot of challenges. Nice. So then, um, you know, uh, the way in which we, we tried to find comfort was to turn towards the religion that we had. Mm. And uh, at that point of time, the God that I knew was in the Hindu religion, right? Uh -huh. So I used to, not only me, but even my family, we used to spend a lot of time in the temples. We used to go to temples in the morning and evenings, wow. trying to find peace and really? trying to really, you know, um, search for truth and also to find peace. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so that's my background. Uh, but then, yeah, after many years, there's a lot of things that was happening throughout the years. I was uh, really looking for, seeking for God, seeking uh -huh. for the truth. And I couldn't find that, unfortunately, mm. in Hinduism. And uh, I just stopped following religion for almost two years. Yeah. And then um, someone preached the gospel to me. It took some time, but eventually I believed in the Lord and I'm in the church now. Ah, yeah. wow. And how did the gospel come to you? How did you even look for that? You yeah. said you're seeking and yes. how? Because if you're in India, mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know who's preaching the gospel out there. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of Christians in India. So okay. uh, like, you know, I grew up in a Catholic, uh, Catholic school. So, mm -hmm. so I had okay. exposure to Jesus Christ. I love the Lord and I really like the stories of the Lord. I found Jesus Christ as a very humble person and I really loved him. But then, uh, you know, the religion is of Catholics or, you know, all these things, it's not right. Because, you know, growing up in a Catholic school, mm -hmm. I saw a lot of immorality in, in Catholic religion. So for me, religion, I didn't find it very attractive, okay. but I really loved Jesus Christ. <laughs> but then um, eventually what happened was that uh, I came to Canada uh -huh. uh, and then uh, a friend, um, one of my friends had contacts with some of the saints from the church in Vancouver okay. and uh, they are the ones who actually preached the gospel to me really? and I rejected it right away <laughs> because for me uh, Christianity was another religion and uh, I didn't I want to follow any religion okay. because as I said I spent so many years almost 25 years of my life trying to find the truth 
and all that they could find in our religion was either they want money mm. or they want power. I These see. are the only two things I could see in almost all religion. Really? So eventually I said, I'll just believe in God. Okay. That's it. I don't want any religion. Just believe in God. So when someone preached the gospel to me, it was a bit hard for me to accept it because right. I found it like just like another religion. I see. But there were some circumstance, circumstances that I had to go through, uh, through which I kind of received the gospel. Ah. So you're telling me even with the Hindu religion, mm -hmm. it's about money. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Almost uh, every religion is about I, money. I had no idea. Yeah. That was also yeah. a factor. Wow. That's true. So you can see the emptiness of religion. Yes. And if their focus is mainly money, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that really is not a very good thing. Yes, yes. And so when you heard the gospel, you initially rejected it. Mm -hmm. But what caused you to turn? Um, I think I was also at a time, like, you know, I was going through a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. and I was trying to find the meaning of life itself. I see. Because uh, as I said before, like growing up, there was a lot of hardships. Right. And um, I had to take a lot of responsibilities, take a lot of financial responsibilities, oh. um, um, like a lot of issues. So I had to deal with it. And then eventually when I was grown up, like almost when I was 26, 27 years old, I was like thinking, what's the point of my life? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want to get married or I want a family mm -hmm. or there was no desire in my life itself and uh, my life was all about just living a worldly life you know mm. i used to smoke i used to drink a lot uh -huh. so my life was very worldly so i was like this life is all about just eating and drinking I what see. is the purpose of my life right. and when it comes to the spiritual matters like the, the spiritual things that i knew was the hindu religion mm -hmm. and i couldn't see any truth in it That's so right. there was no purpose in life wow. and i was at that point i was like I don't want to really live. Mm. So, you know, uh, I was going through that phase where so there's wow. no point of living. Really? Uh, yes. Wow. Okay. And, uh, and it was at that point of time that I, I saw this gospel tract, which was given to me six months before, <laughs> which I just threw it at the corner of my room. Mm. I saw it, I just read it, and I felt good. Okay. I felt something was comforting me, something, mm. there was some life that was coming into me. And then I was a little bit curious and uh -huh. eager and I was very cautious All right I reached back to the saints in Vancouver yeah. Yeah. but I told them I'm not going to believe I'm not going to follow any religion mm. I'm not going to do anything okay. I'm just curious I just want to know a bit more I but see. I don't want to set high expectations right. Right. so that was the study okay so you were just cautious you wanted to see a proof yes in people's lives yes with Jesus Christ yes and so I imagine then you must that the person who shared the gospel with you, you probably saw something different about their lives. Yes, yes. There was a um, lot of difference. And I think, um, first of all, the same, they actually invited me for a, for a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just went for the, so the going for the meeting was also interesting. <laughs> because, you know, I thought my lucky number was six. Okay. okay. Uh, because I was born on 6th of June. So uh -huh. I thought my lucky number was six, six right? Six, you know? right? Yeah, yeah, just six. Yeah. So everything is six, right? You know, and then um, when some of the saints invited me for the for this meeting, I was, I was like, should I go? Should I not go? Mm -hmm. And then I looked up the Google map. And then I'm like, okay, I have to take the subway, uh, subway, oh, right. subway train. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I have to take a bus. And the number of the bus is N15. So oh. one plus five, six. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to get down at a street um, of, uh, because uh, all the saints were meeting at uh, one of the brothers' house in right. Vancouver. Right. And his house is on a street called West 33rd. So again, I was like three plus three, six. Oh, so, wow. So, so okay. I, was like, I was like, okay, that's something nice about it. Like this something, right? It's mm -hmm. all six, you know? And I thought, you know, because at that point of time, I'm coming from this uh, Hindu, Hindu yeah. background, you right. know, there was still a bit, little bit of that left right. in me. Right. And I used to follow numerology and all those things. So ah, that's the reason I thought okay. that six was my lucky number. I see. And then I thought, okay, yeah, something might be adding up. Maybe I should just go. So okay. that's the reason I went for this, <laughs> <laughs> for this meeting. Um, but then, you know, when I went over there, I had fellowship and uh, there was also a brother who was visiting from Fountain Valley ah. at that time. And uh, I was, I was really encouraged by what was the purpose of God, like why God has chosen man. Right. What is the purpose with man? Yeah. You know, and then I realized that, yeah, we are called to be kings and priests to mm. rule over this whole earth, wow. right? Okay. And then um, 
and then I also noticed the difference, like, you know, like all the saints, they didn't have any such, you know, hierarchy in there. Right. Like I didn't see any pastors, like everyone was responsible for the church life. Mm -hmm. And I noticed like, you know, this is something different from I the see. Christianity I had seen back in India. Yeah. It's very different from Catholic religion. Right. And I'm also coming from the southern part of India called Kerala. And there also there's a lot of Christians mm -hmm. belonging to different denominations like Pentecost, Marco, Majakabit, so many different groups. Yeah. But but the saints over here are very different. Uh -huh. Yeah, not only that they are preaching the thing, but they are also living that life. Right. So I found that, you know, this is something different. And again, going back to the two points, money, mm -hmm. hierarchy. Right. This I couldn't find in the church. Uh -huh. So that's why I knew that this is different. Yeah. Well, that's very good. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that. You saw not only what they preached to you, yes. but you saw that their living matched what yes. they spoke about. That's right. You know, in our previous podcast, we mm -hmm. actually spoke about this. Mm -hmm. You know, the real test of a real Christian is someone who not only talks the talk, but mm -hmm. walks the talk. That's right. right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is exactly what is needed. Right? Mm -hmm. We That's hear right. the word of God, yeah. and then we take it, we believe it, and then we do it together mm -hmm. with the Lord. That's right. I'm very happy to hear that you saw the testimony yes. of all the brothers and sisters there in Vancouver. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I, I have to say, you know, many people mm -hmm. from different religions, I think what you just said is the mo the underlying reason why mm -hmm. draws them to Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because they can see God manifested in the flesh, mm -hmm. meaning the expression of Jesus Christ being lived out by right. the brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And then after you got saved, I assume, and baptized, mm -hmm. now you're in the church, so to say, you, you're baptized into the church. You had your choice of going to a lot of other places. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In Vancouver, I'm sure there are many other churches. Yeah. Why did you stay with this group? Yeah, so uh, it's interesting because like um, after I, I, was, I was saved, I started to believe in the Lord, mm -hmm. and then I was baptized. And baptism was also very important because even many people think that baptism is a form of some religious rituals, mm -hmm. right? But in the Word, it is very clear that it is, you are actually being born again. Right? right, it's a new life itself. Mm -hmm. Right, so when you're born again, it's a new life, and the life of Jesus Christ is, is in us. Yeah. So, like what I said before, like I was into all those bad habits, mm -hmm. it was an opportunity for me to forget everything and leave it behind me right. and start a new life in Jesus Christ. And then again, like you know, uh, I knew the Christian religion from before, and it's interesting because after I believed, by the end of that month, I right. had to go back to India. So there was no church like that. Oh, you know, there's nothing. Okay. And I didn't want to go back to any Christian religious groups mm -hmm. because I know what is there. It's yeah. all about authority and power yeah. and money. And money. But, and, and yeah, of course, they might be speaking a lot of things about the Lord. Right. But then there is all these, all the other negative things as well. Right. So when I was back in India, I was just reading the word. Mm -hmm. And honestly, there was no one to teach me. Yeah. And I just come to the Lord and ask him, Lord, what does this mean? Yeah. And he is living. And we need to have that connection with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing. And if you go to him and ask him, he can speak to us. Wow. And that was my experience. <laughs> <laughs> so my whole experience back there was just talking to the Lord, asking him for wisdom and understanding. Not just going into Google or somewhere and trying to search right. something. This, this is so much of knowledge. Right. And I don't know whether that's right or wrong. Those mm -hmm. all may be interpretations mm -hmm. of different men. Right. But when we have the spirit of the Lord yeah. and when we have the word, the yeah. Lord can speak to us. Exactly. So I didn't go to any group. <laughs> right. Very I nice. just stayed uh, by myself. And then I used to meet with some saints in New York. Uh -huh. uh, uh -huh. Because of the time difference, right. it was much more right. convenient for me. Yeah. So my church life was over Skype. <laughs> oh, okay. Before Zoom. <laughs> yeah, before Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah, that was my church life. Okay. Yeah. But then um, the Lord brought me back to Canada, and um, because I think the whole thing is that the Lord knows what is our heart, mm -hmm. what's in our heart, what we truly desire. Right. Do we truly desire to seek after His kingdom? Yes. If you desire that, then He will arrange everything for you. Good. And he did it in amazing ways. Right. You know, after because I was actually in Vancouver through for my work, mm -hmm. and there were like five other people after me who were supposed to come to Vancouver, mm -hmm. and the government in Canada, um, they, the 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 laws were a bit more strict, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and they were not issuing any visas. Oh. But for some reason, <laughs> the previous time when I came in, I got a visa for two years. Oh, perfect. So, so no one could come except me. Oh. So I was sent back and I had a <laughs> <the> church life. <laughs> wow. God really arranged it perfect yes. for you. Yes. It's really good to hear, right? Mm. You know, uh, and, and Paul even did this, mm-hmm. the Apostle Paul. Yeah. When Jesus Christ appeared to him, mm-hmm. he didn't go consulting with a lot of other people. Yes. He spent time in the Word mm-hmm. with the Holy Spirit as the Holy Anointing to mm-hmm. speak to him and to show him all things. That's right. right? This is a confirmation of what, you know, uh, Christian and I, we mm-hmm. had an episode earlier, mm-hmm. and the title was, Which Voice Do You Listen To? Mm-hmm. God's Voice or Man's Voice? Mm-hmm. And it's very good that you learned early on. Mm-hmm. When you're seeking, it's very good that you went to go to the Word, but not just to read the Word as knowledge, right? We can read this as knowledge, but to read it with the Spirit. Mm-hmm. And then God as the Holy Anointing can teach mm-hmm. you all things. This mm-hmm. is very wonderful. That's right. And for you to also then have a seeking heart. That's mm-hmm. the other thing that yeah. is also important. Mm-hmm. If we don't have a seeking heart, then he's not going to answer, right? Mm-hmm. I think it says, the Lord says, ask and you shall receive. Right. Seek and you shall find. Mm-hmm. This is very true. Mm-hmm. And we would tell all of our listeners, mm-hmm. we encourage you. This is very important. Yeah. Just like what we talked about earlier with the Bereans. Mm-hmm. They were very noble. That's right. They were the ones who not only heard the word from mm-hmm. the apostle, mm-hmm. Paul, they went back and he went into the scripture mm-hmm. to make sure to confirm yeah. that this is of God and this yeah. is of the Lord. That's right. And so it's very wonderful. Mm-hmm. And because of this, the Lord brought you back to the church life there in Vancouver. That's right. Yeah. Wonderful to hear. And so the one question I do have to ask you mm-hmm. is, you know, we get a lot of controversy when we speak about this matter of the holy priesthood. Mm-hmm. Right? Christian and I have been talking about the matter of the holy priesthood as God's prescribed way to prepare us mm-hmm. to become first fruits, mm-hmm. to, prepare, to prepare us to become kings and priests and becoming yeah. kingdom age. Mm-hmm. When you heard about the priesthood the first time, mm-hmm. what was your impression? I was very impressed by it. Oh, <laughs> well, you were impressed. <laughs> very very impressed because I was actually <laughs> waiting for an answer. Mm. Because, I was, um, because, because when I came to the church, we were not talking about the priesthood. Right. You know, at that point of time, and uh, I was like, yeah, I'm going for the meetings. I am enjoying the word, but I really wanted to see much more change in me. Mm-hmm. And when the matter regarding the priesthood was revealed to us, I was quite excited. <laughs> and I was like, this is an opportunity for me to be even more transformed yeah. in a very practical way. Right. Because, you know, uh, it, is, it is because every week, like we are thinking about how can I gain Christ? Yes. Right? How can have the the transformation in me right. to have more of Christ formed in me yeah. because many of the times people are just missing this point because many Christians they do a lot of good works mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but how did Christ really is being formed in me yeah. you know just like in the burnt offerings to be obedient right, right. to have the meal offering to have the humanity of Jesus Christ to yeah. have peace offering mm-hmm. to be reconciled with God and with man right, right. so to have all these reality you need the priesthood. Yeah. And uh, I think um, another thing that I really liked about priesthood, maybe because of my Hindu background as well, okay. because in Hinduism, they have different castes or different uh, groups, right? And uh, they have these priestly class, which mm-hmm. is which are called Brahmins. They have the warrior class. Then they mm-hmm. have some business class and then or merchants. And uh-huh. then they have the last one, which are like servants uh-huh. and they are considered as a lower caste, I right? See. And this, this priestly class, it's very similar to the Jewish priest. It's very uh-huh. interesting. Because, wow. you know, when you look at the book of Ezekiel, right. how the temple structure, yeah. even the Hindu temple structure, it's very similar. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they have this outer court, inner court, huh. holy of holies. Mm. But inside the holy of holies, it's an idol. Yeah. You know, and okay. it's not the true living God. It's right. an idol. Okay? Right. And interestingly, even only the priests are allowed to go inside this so-called holy of holies. Huh. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and then they have, they cannot eat meat. There, there is a lot of restrictions, very similar to ju- the Jewish priesthood. Oh, wow. So when I was growing, growing up, right. I really looked up to these priests because I was like, wow, this is an amazing role mm-hmm. because you can be so close to the so-called God I at that see. point of time because no one else can go closer to these idols because at that time I thought the idol is a God. Uh-huh. Right? So I thought this is the most important job. 
Yeah. And how can I come close? Uh, but because my parents did not belong to that caste, right. I was not even allowed. Oh. But then coming to the church and to really see this matter of the mm -hmm. priesthood yeah. and to see that we have been called as a priest to serve the living God. Right. And we can come so close to the true living God. Yeah. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> like I've been desiring this all my life wow. and now I can, I can, I can have it. You know, uh, I don't have to belong to any any of these groups. Exactly. Yeah, and I don't have to be born into these cats, but I am. I can be a priest if I want to be, wow. but it's a choice that I have to make. Yeah. You know, God is not going to force us. Right. Like right. even when we uh, look in the Old Testament, we can mm -hmm. see that. Yeah, God called all the, the like you know Israelites to yes. be a priest. Yes. Right? right. But they didn't choose to be a priest. Right. It was only the Levites uh -huh. who took stand to be the priest, and it has mm -hmm. been given to them as a gift. Yeah. to be a priest right. and later on we can also see that it is actually the sons of Zadok mm -hmm. who kept charge of the sanctuary right. so God is not going to force you <laughs> he's going to give it right in front of you and say if you want it you yeah. can take it right. it's your choice right <laughs> so priesthood it's also a choice like if you want to choose to be a priest mm -hmm. you can choose it it's up right. to you if you want to be in the world you can be in the world if you want to be just be a Christian you can right. be a Christian but it's your choice that's pretty Amazing. Yeah. You know, um, it seems like all these different religions, mm -hmm. especially out towards as you go into Asia, yeah. there's a lot of counterfeit. Yeah. It's very close to Jewish yes. Judaism, right? Yeah. But even Judaism ordained by God is not the is not what God wants. Yeah. That's true. And but it's kind of interesting, right? Mm -hmm. But and you're restricted because of class. Yeah. But praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Today you can be the real priest in the real holy and royal priesthood that's right and this is this is what is so wonderful right we're mm -hmm. not uh, it's not a matter of class yeah but it's a matter of being born of another life yes right and this mm -hmm. is something no religion can do yes hinduism cannot do this buddhism nothing can do mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. it's only through yeah. jesus christ that's right the forgiveness of our sins mm -hmm. right i think in revelation chapter 5 mm -hmm. it says right uh, we have been redeemed mm -hmm. For many people, yeah. nations, tongues. So this yeah. is wonderful. God That's redeemed right. you. That's right. And but He wants to make us kings and priests That's right. to reign on this earth together mm -hmm. with Him when He comes again. Yeah. Right. And what's the beauty behind it is there is no class. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Once we're born of God, mm -hmm. whether you're from India, from a high class, or yeah. for me from America, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. We all share in the same life of God. Mm -hmm. And because we have the life of God, we are not only children of God, mm -hmm. we are sons of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And his desire is for our destiny to be is to become kings and priests. That's right. This is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you had a very positive reaction. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'll tell you, we've talked a lot of different people and some have a negative reaction. Mm -hmm. Like, what is this priesthood? Mm -hmm. But it's good. I think, you know, um, for... For all of us as Christians today, mm -hmm. again, I'll go back to what you had said earlier. Seek and you shall find. find. That's right. Right? So if you're not so sure, viewers, listeners, if you're not so sure regarding the matter of the priesthood, then I would challenge you, as Nihi did, is to ask God. Mm -hmm. Ask the Lord with the Word. Mm -hmm. Take the Word in prayer and mm -hmm. ask Him, is this really of you? Mm -hmm. And for sure, God is the holy anointing yes. will reveal it to you. Yes. And you're right. Mm -hmm. And it is the, really the only way mm -hmm. to get us ready for his soon return. Mm -hmm. right. right? To be qualified to be kings and priests. It's not a matter of, you know, what big following we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus did not big following when he was yeah. on the cross. You know, everybody ran away. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. But it's what kind of a person we are. Yes. Right? It came down to the very person of who Jesus Christ was, who then made it to the throne. Mm -hmm. And his desire is that we would make it to the throne. Yes. And it is wonderful. Mm -hmm. It is so I am so encouraged mm -hmm. to hear how the gospel, how you met Jesus Christ. Yeah. And now we are all in this same highway of holiness right. to reach this goal to mm -hmm. prepare for Jesus Christ's return. That's right. So Thank you very much for joining us on this special edition of the podcast. Yeah, thank you. It's thank so you wonderful sure. to be able to have fellowship with so many brothers and sisters from all around the world mm -hmm. and from different kinds of background, but we all now share the same goal. That's right. Amen. And for all of you who are listening, you know, I encourage you, right? 
continue in this path. Mm -hmm. As the podcast says, we're here to prepare for this imminent coming of Jesus Christ. The time is really close. Amen. And all of us, we need to spread this word. And we also need to cooperate with Jesus Christ to prepare Amen. for his return. Amen. So uh, just a reminder for all of you who are listening, if you like this podcast, please share it out. Spread the word. And for those of you who might be li listening there in India, please spread the word out to India. Because there are many who are in this religion that Nihi was in that could surely hear the word. And if they're seeking, God can definitely call them out. That's right. And so thank you again. Thank you. All right.